Hey makeup friends! Today we're going to go through all of the items that I picked up in the month of April and strap in because it's a lot. I'm going to share with you my ideas on these products, whether or not I recommend them, and let you know which items I already have done dedicated reviews on, which items I might do dedicated reviews on, and for the items that kind of fall in between those two, we're just going to deal with them in today's video. So let's get into it. As always, I want to start off by welcoming you back to my channel, or if you are new here, then hello and welcome. My name is Kara, and on my channel, we like to mix beauty, brains, and the occasional F-bomb. On my eyes today is the Melt Cosmetics Mary Jane palette, and on my lips is the shade Muted from Juvia's Place. Now, before we get into the video, I need to address the elephant in the room, otherwise known as my beauty budget. May she rest in peace. She's gone. It's dead. It's over. It was a fun idea while it lasted, but I'm not even going to pretend anymore. I'm just not. And I may sound a little defensive here, but it's only because I'm aware of how judgmental some people on the internet can be. Not necessarily you, but some people. And I'm just, I'm kind of hoping that I can like cut that off at the pass here. So there's a lot of items that we're going to go through. I have spent a lot of money. I'm not going to add it all up because frankly, I don't want to know. But I'm just going to say my job outside of YouTube has been incredibly busy the last few months, like intensely busy. The last few months have kind of been basically the pinnacle of my career in terms of earnings. And so this is the fruit of my labor, basically. So I had fun in the month of April and Honestly, so far in May, I've also had fun and I refuse to feel guilty about it. So let's just dig into this and get through it. So first up, let's talk foundations. I picked three of them up in the month of April. One is the Good Apple Foundation from Kat Von D. I also picked up the Fenty Beauty Skin Tint. What is this? The Easy Drop Blurring Skin Tint in the shade number three. And then I also picked up the Water Tone Foundation from Makeup Forever, and this one's in the shade Y245. Don't think I said the shade on the Kat Von D, and that is Light 021, and this is the one that I'm wearing today. What I can say about all three of these is that I'm really happy with all three. If I had to rank them, I think I would go Makeup Forever, Fenty, and then the KVD. These two just offer very effortless, light coverage. This one is a little bit more on the fuller coverage side, although not necessarily full coverage. I would say that a little goes a long way with this and it does blend out very nicely. With all three, I think that they leave a really nice finish on the skin. It looks very much like skin. And again, with all three, it doesn't look like I'm wearing makeup. So even when I look at myself up close in a mirror, all three of these just sink in really nicely and it just looks like my skin, but perfected. So I'm really happy with all three. I haven't heard many people talking about the Makeup Forever and I frankly love it. It's so lightweight, so easy to wear. And because it's so lightweight, it wears really well. I just don't notice any signs of it wearing away throughout the day. And even at the end of the day, I'm not seeing any separation on my skin. I think it's an absolutely beautiful product and I'm really, really happy with this one. For blending out foundation, I also picked up this new brush here from Dior. At first I thought it was gonna be like scratchy, sort of like a potato scrubber, but it's actually incredibly soft. It does blend things out really nicely and I'm very happy with it, although it does have a very high price point. So I really can't say it's a must have product, I think you can get a similar result using cheaper brushes, but I felt like splurging. I did. I took full advantage of the Sephora sale. This is one of the items that I picked up and I am very happy with it. She's very dirty, needs to be washed, but I have been reaching for this one over and over and over again because I find that it just blends everything out so effortlessly. There's no brush strokes on my face, nothing of that sort. And it's just so incredibly soft that I actually just really enjoy using this brush. 
I didn't pick up any concealers to test out in the month of April, but I did grab two new setting sprays. One is from Dior, the other one is from Benefit. This is the Forever Perfect Fix Set and Refresh Spray, and then this one is the Professional Super Setter. Frankly, between the two of them, I would go with the Benefit one. This one has a really nice spray nozzle on it. It's a very fine mist, but there is quite a bit of it, so you really don't have to sit there and spray and spray and spray. One or two pumps does it. It's very, very lightly fragranced, so it's really not overwhelming at all. It doesn't have any stickiness to the skin. There's no little specks of glitter or anything like that that you can get with some setting sprays. And overall, it dries really quickly, doesn't irritate my eyes, and I really like it. The Dior is also very good. It doesn't have as fine of a mist. It's a little bit more aggressive. You can even just hear that in the way that it sounds. It is very strong. It's very strongly fragranced. Just went down my throat. I can taste the smell. It's a little much. I don't necessarily dislike it because I do think that it helps to meld all the powders into my skin very nicely and leaves my skin looking like I'm not even wearing makeup. But just be aware, keep your mouth closed, don't talk after spraying it. And if you're sensitive to scent, give this one a pass because it is very strongly fragranced. Speaking of fragrance, I went crazy and I bought three full size and one travel size. Um, that's not me. I'm normally not like a huge perfume person, but here we are. Twas the month of pampering myself. So the little mini that I got is from Guerlain. This is the Aqua Allegoria in Herba Fresca. I don't love it. The reason I bought it is because it's supposed to have notes of like Lily of the Valley, which frankly is one of my favorite scents ever. Love Lily of the Valley. This does not so much smell like Lily of the Valley. I like it more once it's dried down, but upon fresh application, it just smells artificial to me. Once it's kind of sunk into my skin and whatever chemistry happens between my skin and the fragrance, whenever that magic happens, it smells much better. But just initial spray, not in love. That's the problem with buying fragrance online, but I will, I will continue to wear that one. It is very much a summer scent to me. It's just not my favorite one. I also bought another one from um, Guerlain. This one is the Aqua Allegoria in Coconut Fizz. It must smell very strongly of fizz because there is not a hint of coconut in here. Again, not a bad scent. It is growing on me, but not, not an instant love. It does not smell anything like coconut, and I think that is part of the problem. I'm just wildly disappointed that it doesn't smell like coconut. The bottle's beautiful. The scent is nice. Not coconutty. Okay. The next two, absolutely love them. So this one is from Juicy Couture. This is Viva La Juicy Noir. One of you recommended this to me back, gosh, maybe Christmas time, somewhere around then. And I did get a sample of it and I loved it. And I put it off and I put it off and I put it off. And then I was cashing in Shoppers Drug Mart points and added this one to cart. So this one, oh gosh, you guys make fun of me whenever I try to like describe scents because I don't know how to do it. It's a sexy smell, does that make sense? It's not like, it's not citrusy, it's not even particularly light. This would be like a perfect winter scent. And yet it's not so like heavy and musky that you can't wear it during the summer. I have no idea what the notes or the undertones or anything of that sort is, I have no clue, but I love this. It's just like, for being called Viva La Juicy, it's still a very grown-up scent. I expect something like light and fruity when it's called Viva La Juicy, but no, this is beautiful. Oh my gosh, I love that so much. It's so, and the bottle's so cute too. I love that. The last perfume that I picked up is from Erin, and this is Mediterranean Honeysuckle. It's beautiful. Like definitely a floral scent, as you would expect with Honeysuckle in the name. Again, it's a very grounded scent. Like it's not, I don't even know what I mean by that when I say that. I just mean like it's not a super like light and airy and super fresh kind of smell. There's more substance to it. And yet it's not so heavy that I feel like I can't wear it in the summer. This is very much a spring and summer scent to me, but my God, 
It is beautiful. There's another one from Erin called Lilac Path that I want to get. It smells like straight up lilacs. Beautiful, beautiful perfume. So that one's on my birthday wish list. I might just gift it to myself. We shall see if I have another great month at work, maybe, but I'm very happy with this one. Diving back into the makeup though, I did pick up three blushes. So one of them is from Hourglass. This is the Vanish Blush Stick, and I picked it up in the shade Devoted. It's just a really pretty, like rosy kind of tone, and I've really been enjoying wearing this. I can either just like rub it on my face or what I usually do is just bring a little bit of it up, run my brush back and forth and then apply it that way. And I find that that just gives me a little bit more control over how much pigmentation shows up. But this blends out so nicely. Again, no stickiness on the skin and it has really good longevity as well. So even by the end of the workday, you can still see the blush on my face, which definitely is a key for me. I do not like applying a blush and then it just like evaporates throughout the day. Another blush that I picked up is from Bite Beauty and I have some thoughts on this one. So this, first of all, I don't like the packaging for a couple of reasons. Let's start with what we see here first before I take the lid off and potentially traumatize you all. Anyways, this is what it looks like. This sticker, was originally like up here down to here so it was sealing the lid on there but when I take it off there's absolutely no indication on here as to what the product is or what the shade name is so I had to remove the entire sticker bring it down and wrap it around the packaging so of course it's all like bumpy and juddy outy but just to have any idea what in the hell this thing actually is and what it is is the Daycation Whipped Blush in the shade Watermelon Marg now, let's open it up, shall we? Tell me that doesn't look like a little tiny micropene. Tell me it doesn't. I can't unsee it. <laughs> very unfortunate, but there it is. It's just a nubby little peen. Anyways, the complaints about the packaging go beyond the aesthetics. It's difficult to get the product out. You have to squeeze the ever-living hell out of this thing, and I don't appreciate that. Once it does come out, it's hard to control how much you get. There it is here. It does apply very nicely. I think the shade names are a little misleading because this looks nothing like watermelon. It's very much like a rosy, almost, almost mauve-ish kind of color. It is pretty, it does blend out nicely. There is a bit of a sheen to it, which I wasn't necessarily expecting. Don't really doesn't really bother me, but at any rate, there is a sheen to it. I did have one of the other shades as well. I cannot remember what it was called. It was one of the more like peachy ones. I returned it because it just didn't go well with my skin tone. And frankly, I knew that I wasn't gonna get a ton of use out of these. I will continue to use this one simply because this color is unique to my collection, but I really don't like the packaging on it. I think it's really difficult to work with. If you have any sort of like grip issues, like I'm thinking of my best friend who has rheumatoid arthritis, so holding on to things is a little bit difficult for her. Having to squeeze that hard to get the product out, I don't think that she would appreciate this kind of packaging. So if you have any of those kind of issues with your hands, I would suggest passing on this one because it's very difficult to get the product out. The last blush that I picked up is this one here. Now this is from Made by Mitchell and I, First of all, I am so glad that he called it made by Mitchell and not made by M -M 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 Mitchell because I am 40 years old and I have a very difficult time calling somebody M -M 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 Mitchell. I just can't do it. Anyways, this is his Blursh, a name that I truly hate. It just, it's nails on a chalkboard to me. But regardless, I really wanted the shade. I really wanted a matte orange blush. Hmm, that is not what I got. So it looks like it would be, it truly does. You apply it, again, all things are going swimmingly, it's orange, and then you blend it out and it turns into this weird golden rod mustard yellow, which just makes me look like I have freaking jaundice or some sort of liver disorder. It is horrible on my cheeks. like horrible and I cannot build it up to make it look orange without just going straight and just not blending it out and then I look crazed. So I 
hate it as a blush, like truly hate it as a blush. However, as a liquid lipstick, it's actually pretty baller. So that's how I've been using it. I just use it as a liquid lipstick, a little bit on the drying side, not terrible, but I certainly can't wear it as a goddamn blush. So lipstick it is. Where there's a will, there's a way, right? Uh, I also bought some lipsticks. I told you guys, I went ham in the month of April. Anyways, here we are. Let's go through them really quickly. The Fenty Mademoiselle lipsticks were over 50% off, so I picked up three. We've got Pumpkin Rose, Violet Fury, and Clapback. I haven't worn these two yet, but I have worn this one, and she is beautiful. I do have some of these in other shades as well, and while it's not necessarily my favorite lipstick formula, I really do like it, and also I like how precise it is on application, so I was really happy to get these ones, especially in shades that I don't already have in my collection. I picked up one of the e.l.f. Sheer Slick lipsticks in the shade Grapefruit as well to try. This is one that I think I'm going to have to circle back on because honestly I think I've only worn it once and I really can't remember what I thought of it. So I'm going to have to play with that one a little bit more and then in a future video I will slip this in and let you know my thoughts on it at that point. Sorry, not helpful now, but it is what it is. I also picked up one of these ones from Tarte. This one is in the shade Sea Goddess and it is so pretty. First of all, I love the packaging on these. I always have. I resisted very strongly not to buy it just for the packaging, but then they went on sale and I saw this shade and it's just so pretty. And again, it's one of those shades that I really don't already have in my collection, as big as it is. That's a shade that I don't have and now I do. So I love that. I picked up another shade of the oil infused glosses from Bobbi Brown. This one is Red Streak. I love these products so much. I'm really not familiar with Bobbi Brown. I don't, I don't even think I've tried anything other than these. I really don't, but I really enjoy the formula on these. It's a nice little hybrid between a lip gloss and a lip oil. So you have like the feel of a lip oil with a little bit more longevity than what you would normally get from an oil. And definitely the pigmentation is there as well. These are really beautiful products. I picked up a lip gloss from Dior as well. This one is in shade 640 Ja Dior. Stupid name, but regardless, here we are. Again, a very nice lip gloss. It's very neutral, like there's not a ton of pigmentation shows up because of the nature of the color, but it's very comfortable to wear doesn't have any stickiness to it or anything that sometimes bad glosses have, like those strings and all that kind of stuff. This doesn't do any of that. It doesn't move around on my lips. It's very comfortable to wear, and I really, really like it as an everyday gloss. I also caved and bought one of the new Gucci lipsticks. This one is in the shade My Cousin Rachel, and these are really nice. Like these are dangerously nice because there's a few other colors that I would very much like to pick up, but they are hella expensive, like $55 Canadian each. But it has like all the shine of a lip gloss with more longevity than most lip glosses will give you. It is very, very comfortable on the lips. Like these are basically like putting a tinted lip balm on, but with more pigmentation. I am very much a fan of these. Not a fan of the price point, but I'm very happy to at least have one of them. Very happy with this. Now, these two over here have quickly become favorites. So this one here is from Huda. This is one of the cream lipsticks in the shade Angel. It's just a really pretty beigey pink kind of shade. Again, a very neutral nude shade, goes with any eye look. These are very, very comfortable on the lips. They do have a nice amount of sheen to them. They don't slide around. They don't travel into the corners of my mouth. It's just a really comfortable wearing lipstick. This one here from Natasha Denona is one of the I Need a Nude lipsticks, and this one is in the shade Michelle, and this is the perfect nude lipstick for me. Like, it's just very flattering on my skin tone. I think it's absolutely beautiful. These lipsticks in and of themselves are one of my favorite formulas of all the lipsticks that I own. 
They go on very creamy. They're very emollient on the lips, but again, they don't feather. They don't transfer into the corners of my mouth. There is very good wear time on them for being a creamy sort of finish. There is a little bit of a shine, but not too much. They're just, they're the perfect lipstick in my opinion. I love them so much. Oh, but we're not done yet, guys. We haven't even started on eyeshadow palettes. That's coming up. We're gonna finish the other stuff first. So here is one of the bronzer duos from Patrick Ta. I got it in the shade She's Statuesque, which is the lightest option that they have. I really like this packaging. I think it's so intelligent just to have this little flap that covers the cream product. So this is the contour, this is the bronzer. I will say that they do go on very light. So if you do have fair skin, this is going to show up on you. This is almost too light for me. I'm NC20. I could probably stand to have the next deeper shade, but this one does work on me. I don't know how it's gonna go in the summer once I do have a bit of a tan. For right now, it's workable. I do like the undertones. This one is definitely cool enough without being too gray, and this is definitely warm enough without pulling orange on my skin. So at this time of year, it does work really well. I'm just not sure come July, August, how it's gonna show up on my skin, but we shall see then. Eyeliners, I bought five. This one I know I have talked about already on my channel, and I'm, I'm actually questioning whether I bought this in March, and I just think I bought it in April. I don't know, time has lost all meaning. Anyways, this is the eye defining pencil from um, Tom Ford. It's a double-ended jobby, so there's one end is a little bit more finer tipped, and then this one is a little bit more of a fat boy over here. I love this eyeliner. Like I hate that I love it because it's horrifically expensive, like $75. Like it's, it's a little much, but I love it. It applies so nicely. It's so easy to work with. Like I just, I love, love this eyeliner absolutely not a must have, like it's $76, absolutely not a must have, but I'm glad that I have it. Like I'm very grateful to have been able to buy it. I don't know if I'm going to repurchase it once it runs out though because of that price point, but I really do like it. I, I really do like it. And then there's these guys here. Now I know I have talked about these ones as well. These are both from Makeup Forever. Uh, I have, what shade is this? This is Fuchsia, etc. And this one is Any Tangerine. What's cool about these is you can use them as lip pencils and eye pencils. You can also use them as brow pencils, which I am not of the mind to rock an orange or a fuchsia eyebrow, but to each their own. I think it looks really cool on other people. For me, I would feel very self-conscious. But as eye pencils and as lip pencils, these are both amazing. Really like the formula on these. And then these two here are other products that I'm gonna to have to circle back on. They're both eyeliners from Dior. I got a white one and a green one. I will say the green is a little bit more muted than I was expecting it to be. I thought it might be more in the Kelly green kind of category. It's a pretty green, but it's just not quite as vibrant as I was expecting it to be. The white is very nicely pigmented though. So there is some optimism for that one, but I have not yet played with these on my eyes, so I will have to do that and then share my thoughts on that in a future video as to how they hold up, how they apply, all of that good stuff. All right, and now we're into eyeshadows. So before we get into eyeshadow palettes, let's talk about single shadows. So again, this is one that I have talked about and I have demoed on my channel already. This is one of the shadow sticks from Vive, and this one is in the shade Hazelnut and it's just what you would expect it to be, a nice brown eyeshadow pencil stick thing. I freaking love this thing so much. Like it's a really pretty color. It blends out really nicely. It lasts all day. And I love this topped with this single over here from Victoria Beckham. This is one of her lid lusters in the shade Blonde, which is just a really pretty, sort of champagne-y kind of color. It looks white in the pan here, but it has more dimension to it than just being like a white or a champagne. There's a little bit of like a gold reflect in it. And once it's blended out and especially patted on top of hazelnut, 
it really is beautiful and just adds the right amount of sparkle to the eyes. It just makes for a really easy eyeshadow look. The Too Faced Melted Chocolate um, eyeshadows, the liquid eyeshadows went on sale, so I grabbed another one of them because I have a few of them and I really do enjoy them. Again, these are really great for one and done kind of looks. There it is here. This one is in the shade Warm and Fudgy, which I think is really cute. Again, they give you enough time to blend them out, but once they dry down, they are locked and loaded and they are not budging. They don't crack on the eyes, they don't crease up. I just really enjoy using them, especially for one and done kind of looks. And this is the kind of shade that I gravitate for, for those kind of looks. So happy with this one as well. And then these, okay, so I, I feel like I rarely get on here and say like, you guys need these. Cause I don't think that that's my call. However, what I like to say when I think you guys need these rather than saying that is this is a run, don't walk situation. And these two fit that category. These are both from Melt and these are their little glitter pots. That's what I have on my lid here today. These are gorgeous, like seriously gorgeous. So I have a hard time working with just loose glitters because they tend to be flaky and they get all over the damn place and they're just a big freaking mess, frankly. And then pressed glitters are hit or miss. Some are definitely better than others. Enter the glitter gel. These are so beautiful. Look at them. They are gorgeous. This one is in the shade Burnout and this one is Pothead and they're beautiful. I don't have to apply a glitter glue. I've had these on, like what time is it? It's about three o'clock in the afternoon. I applied it at about 10 this morning. So five hours of wear, not a speck of glitter on my face. Nothing has creased, nothing has moved around. They are locked and loaded into place. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful product. I am so glad that I picked them up. There is one other shade. I'm very tempted to pick it up, frankly, because I think they're so gorgeous. But if I had to recommend one, Burnout. That's the shade that I'm wearing right now. It's this beautiful coppery kind of color. This on top of, say, the Vive Shadow Stick or that liquid shadow from Too Faced takes it to a whole nother level. Love, love these glitter pots. Now, I'm not sure how Lorena makeup got onto my radar, but I'm glad they did. I picked up some loose pigments from them. Now these are very difficult for me to swatch on the fly because they really do need a base to them, but I can at least hold it up to the camera. Even just the inner lid shows just how beautiful these are. So this one is, oh gosh, I can't turn it upside down or else it's gonna spill everywhere. That one was the shade Alien. Next up is Crystal. There's crystal there. I have just spilled it everywhere. So I now have silver dust everywhere and it's like floating through the air. I can see it moving at least, at least it wasn't a full casualty. There's still quite a bit in there, but like here's just a smattering of it. Look how sparkly and beautiful that is. That's so gorgeous. And then the other shade that I've got here is Bonita. This one I'm gonna be a little bit more careful with. Same kind of idea, but pink, and it's so pretty. And then I also got some of their Chameleon Chips in the shade Omnia, and you gotta hold on to your butt. Sorry guys, you gotta hold on to it or else it's gonna fall off, because these are, oh my God, so gorgeous. Look at that. So beautiful. Okay, that one deserves a swatch. See that shift, green to purple? Oh, it's so gorgeous. So, so beautiful. All right, and now we are on to eyeshadow palettes. And there's a few, so let's just dive straight into it. First up, I got the Birthstone palette for April from BH Cosmetics. This is the Diamond palette. I did do a full dedicated review on this, so if I think about it, I will link it up here in case you're interested. I also do have an entire playlist of eyeshadow palette reviews. So if there's ever an eyeshadow palette and you're wondering if I've reviewed it, check out the playlist, because if I have, it'll be over there. 
Another palette that I have done a review on is the Butopsy palette from Hindash. This one shocked the hell out of me because frankly, I did not think I was gonna be able to make it work. I really thought that it was going to be far too difficult to work with, that I was just gonna be overwhelmed and not have any idea what to do with it, but it is actually far more intuitive than you might think. I've used it as contour, as bronzer, as blush. I've highlighted under my eyes with it, used it as eyeshadow. It's a beautiful palette. And what I really like about the pigmentation in here is that it's all very buildable. So while it applies sort of a wash of color, it's easily built up to full opacity. And I think that's what helps to make it so approachable and so user-friendly because particularly these kind of shades, they can be a little overwhelming, but they apply so gently to the eyes that you don't go in and get this shade straight out of the gate, which I frankly appreciate because it just, it allows you to have that much more control over the powders. This palette has quickly become a favorite of mine. I think it's absolutely stunning. I'm very excited to see what else he does. I have heard rumors that he's working on an all shimmer palette. I'm gonna commence holding my breath now because I need that in my life. I'm just gonna go out and say it. I need it in my life. Now, another palette that I picked up is this one here from Too Faced. This is the Teddy Bear palette. Initially, I was shocked by how small it is. And then people did point out, and I did do the math myself, there is actually the same amount of eyeshadow in here, gram per gram. And so it just, it looks like it's really small, but I don't know if the like pans are really deep or like what sorcery is going on here, but it's not actually a ripoff like I initially thought it might be. Nonetheless, these powders perform so nicely on the eyes. The shimmers are metallic-y, are foiled, or some other word that works with the English language. The mattes blend out really nicely. I love the color story of this. I do wish that Too Faced would pick a lane. Like, are we doing glow job or are we doing teddy bears? Like, which one are we doing? Because I feel like those are on opposite ends of the spectrum. However, for me, it is a win. I have not done a dedicated review on this palette. If you're interested in that, you can let me know in the comments below. I don't plan on doing it because when I've put up polls in the past, nobody's been really interested in it. So I leave it to you, but regardless, I have enjoyed using it. Another palette that I don't intend to do a review on simply because it is a much older palette at this point, this is the Warm Edit from Viseart. Just because I don't necessarily want to do a review doesn't mean that I think it's a bad palette because this is beautiful. This, these are, <clears throat> they're sumptuous. I don't know what it is about this formula, but it just applies like a dream. Like they blend out so nicely. The shimmers are not quite as foiled as they are in the Too Faced palette, but they're still impactful on the eyes and not at all disappointing. I love the gradient of shades in here. I just think it's a really easy palette to work with and I've loved the looks that I've created with it. I also picked up this one here from Viseart. This is the Soleil La Plage and there's what she looks like here. This is the newest palette in their range. This one I might do a review on. If you're interested in it, let me know down below, um, but it's just pretty. I haven't had as much time to play with this one as with the warm edit, so I've only made one look with it so far. But again, the mattes are a dream to work with. The shimmers are really pretty. I really like the color story that's going on here. I know a lot of people might call it boring or just a pop of blue kind of palette. I can't necessarily argue against that, but I think they just all work really nicely together. I love that the blue has like a little bit of a shift going on in it. I love the inclusion of this more corally kind of shade over here. I just think it's a really pretty summery palette and this is one that I'm excited to get my teeth into a little bit more. Now, obviously on my eyes is the Mary Jane palette. So yes, I did pick that up. This is one that I did plan to do a dedicated review on and then it just like time got away from me and I haven't. And I don't know that it's relevant at this point. It's kind of crazy how fast makeup moves, to be honest. But what I can say in this video is that I really do like this palette. In particular, the mattes that are in there, I find they blend out so nicely, even that really dark brown. And sometimes the blendability of Melt's mattes leaves me wanting more. That is for sure. Looking at you, 420, you did me dirty. This, the mattes are gorgeous. The shimmers... 
not my favorite formula. You have that same sort of crumbly kind of texture that they had in smoke sessions, not nearly as bad. Nothing is puffed out of the pans on me, but in particular this shade here, which I have underneath the glitter pot today, it does better with a finger than it does with a brush. This shade over here swatches terribly, and yet when you do apply it to the eyes, it just produces this really beautiful sheen. It's not particularly foiled per se, but it does produce a really nice sheen, but the finger swatch is very lackluster. Like you can barely see that on my hand there. But you can see the sheen, right? So once you do apply that onto the eyes, it does catch the light nicely. So overall, I'm not disappointed in this palette, but I really do wish that they would just nail down the consistency of these shadows. You know, the, the formula from one palette to the next should not vary as much as they do with melt shadows. And sometimes they're a hit and sometimes they're a miss. This one, I don't really feel like it's a must have, need to buy it kind of palette. It is a very cool toned palette. So if you do like that kind of look, this offers some great options. But I do think that there are nicer formulas out there. However, having said that, I do like working with this one. It's just I prefer to use my finger with the shimmers than a brush simply because they shift around too much in the pan when you use a brush with them. So that's what I'll say about this one. Then I picked up this guy here from Huda Beauty. This is the Toffee Brown palette. And here she is. I've only used it a couple of times. When I have used it, I have enjoyed it, but it just hasn't become like a go-to palette for me for whatever reason. The shades are really pretty in there. And again, the mattes blend out nicely. The shimmers are really pretty, but it just, there's just something about it that I'm not like in love with. It's certainly not a must have palette in my mind. I don't regret buying it, but if it disappeared from my collection, I probably wouldn't be too upset about it. We'll put it that way. The last two palettes that I picked up in April are both from Dior and in particular, Soft Cashmere has become an instant favorite. It is so beautiful. It's so perfect for everyday wear. These are colors that you just don't even have to think about. You can just throw them on your eyes and away you go. And yet there's so much more to them than what you see in the pan. Like they're just, these shades, especially these more metallic kind of shades, they're so pretty. Like they're just so pretty. So there they are there. I mean, this one is very, very subtle. Yet on the inner corner, it catches the light really nicely. You can see just how much reflection there is. They're beautiful shadows. And then this one here is in the shade Tutu. This one I have not had an opportunity to play with nearly as much, and yet it is a beautiful color story. And again, perfect for everyday wear, perfect for wearing to the office. It's just so damn pretty. And this one, this shade in particular, looks very similar to the one in Soft Cashmere, but this one has more of like a pinky shift to it. And again, I just think they're so, I, like, I don't even know the word to describe them. I keep saying the same things over and over again, but it's just effortlessly beautiful. All right, and there you have it, guys. That was my very conservative haul from April. Sarcasm. No, it wasn't. It was an extreme amount. It was an amount of makeup that nobody needs. I don't even need it. So yes, I spent a ridiculous amount of money on makeup in the month of April, but I'm very grateful to be in the position to be able to do so and to do so without feeling guilt about it because Barry and I paid the important stuff first and then this was basically fun money for me. So I, I really am grateful. I truly am. I don't take any of this for granted. And I know that this is a ridiculous amount of makeup. I know that it's more than I need or anybody needs, but it does bring me immense joy. Like it truly does. I love playing with makeup. I love trying new brands and testing out new formulas. I love sharing my opinions on it with you guys. I just, I get so much joy out of it. And this really is my passion. So investing in that does bring me joy. So there it is. That's all I'm going to say about that. 
If there are any items in particular that you are interested in hearing my thoughts on, please let me know down below. Of course, I'll always take that into consideration when planning future videos. But with all of that said, I'm going to wrap this video up here. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch, and I will see you in my next one. Until then, just be a decent human being. Bye for now.